Today on Ballistic Barbecue, not only will I be putting the Badger Barrel to the ultimate test, hanging ribs, I want to see how well it compares to the Pit Barrel Cooker, but I'm going to be sharing with you a very special barbecue sauce. Let's get going. Before we start this cook, I want to share this barbecue recipe with you guys. I received a message from one of my viewers named Kevin. Kevin's a fan of Sonny's Barbecue. Sonny's is a chain. They have restaurants throughout the South and Southeast. Uh, it looks like they have a lot of restaurants in uh, Florida. And Kevin liked or likes their mild barbecue sauce. They sell all of their sauces in bottles, but apparently for some reason they stopped selling the mild, although it still is available in their stores. Um, here's what I came up with. I worked my ass off on this recipe, and what Kevin did was very helpful. They, they have the sauces available in you know these small plastic pouches. He sent me a bunch of these pouches. So the first thing that I did was developed a base sauce and I utilized the ingredient list on, on this packet here. Now any of these commercial brands, they're you know going to list ingredients, but it's very general. You know, they're just they're gonna say spices instead of individual spices. But what they will do is list the unique ingredients. And so that was very helpful. So what I did was I came up with a base sauce, just kind of a very generic base barbecue sauce. And then I started to add the specialized ingredients. One of the main special ingredients in this sauce was, uh, or is, tamarind. So I bought some tamarind paste. You can get it at, you know, any of your, uh, like, Middle Eastern, and a lot of the Hispanic markets will have it, or on Amazon, which is what I did. And I came up with this, finally, uh, I consumed so much of this stuff uh, that I was sick of it. <laughs> you know, I'd try a little bit, add a little bit more of one of the ingredients, try a little bit more, add a little bit more, and ultimately I came up with this. I, I'm very happy with the results. I, I think I really matched the color, but more importantly, the flavor. Uh, I got as far as I can get. I, I honestly would be su surprised if anyone could get closer than, than this. But once again, here's that ingredient list. And I will have the, the ingredients down in the description box below. But very unique sauce. I mean, just the color alone. But the flavor is unlike any other barbecue sauce I've ever tried. So here are those St. Louis cut ribs. First thing first. Now, I'm not going to get into a big tutorial on this, but we're going to remove that membrane. You guys have seen people remove membranes off of ribs thousands of times. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is apply a rub. And again, I'm not really doing a copycat on Sunny's recipe, barbecue recipe. I'm just using this sauce in my cook. And I'm using Pit Patriots rub. This is just a really good hickory based rub. Tastes Great. I decided not to go with a binder on this. I didn't want to slather it with mustard or anything. There's actually a decent amount of mustard in this barbecue sauce. And I don't want to really affect the flavor of that sauce. I really want to see how good this tastes on ribs. I was looking at their menu and one of their applications is they'll do like um, dry rubbed baby backs and then they'll just sort of you know run a bead a zigzaggy bead of the of their sauce on the uh, on the ribs I'm not really sure I, I'm guessing they probably do an application where they're cooking the the sauce on with the ribs like you know a, like a final kind of a finish which is what I'm going to do there we are of course we're going to be hanging these so I'm going two bones down with my hook. Insert that. I have to go two bones on this one as well. Let's get this badger barrel ready to hang. Some ribs. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this now to one quarter open. 
using lump charcoal today and I, what I did was I filled this up and then removed about 20, 25 percent. Charcoal I removed, I lit in this charcoal chimney here. And add that to the center. I'm not adding any wood chips. This is hard oak, charcoal, lump charcoal. It'll smoke fine for this cook. Go ahead and get this. Just go ahead and do, latch this thing. I have the ring, the meat hanging ring <laughs> inserted here. This is going to be my first time using it like this. Actually, it's my second cook on this. Get that lid on. And then we'll clamp it. And I guess the clamp, the, the main purpose is to help with a really tight seal. And I'm going to start out with it fairly, fairly tight, you know, as far as the upper damper here. And again, for my elevation, I'm a quarter of the way open here. And again, just like the pit barrel cooker, that lower damper is set based on the elevation you're cooking at. I'm between sea level and 2,000 feet here, so one quarter is the proper setting. As far as the lid damper, right now I'm starting out with it here, you know, pretty darn tight. I'm going to check on the cook in probably 30, 40 minutes, and I want to see how it's progressing based on my experience with the pit barrel cooker. And if I need to open it any, I will. And I'll, and I'll keep you guys up post, posted on that or updated on that. Okay, we are at the two hour mark now. And as promised, I wanted to show you where I ended up with those uh, lid dampers. I settled in at about halfway open. This setting seems to be putting it right where the pit barrel cooker is. So I'm liking it. Let's go ahead and check these ribs out. We go nice. It's getting some gorgeous, gorgeous color. Starting to get some pullback. So I'll be checking back in another 40 minutes, and that's when I'm going to evaluate whether or not I'm going to baste them with the sauce yet or not. I'm definitely going to again finish this up by setting that sauce inside the pit, but. So far, so good. Smells really, really good. Two hours and 40 minutes in, just check these ribs and I'm going to pull them, baste them, put them back in the pit. And look at that. Well, I will say just like the pit barrel cooker, when you're pulling the lid off to pull the ribs for basting or some type of meat maintenance just make sure you put the lid back on so we maintain that temperature and we don't get you know a fire developing down at the bottom wow it's definitely got that pit barrel cooker color it's gorgeous yeah we're getting some really nice tenderness it's humid out here today it's like we've had this kind of monsoonal weather going on Flies are starting to come out. Base the bottom of these first. You can see the color, the sauce, very unique. It's kind of like a Heinz 57 type of color. So I'm not sure how my version of the sauce compares to Sunny's. But I can say that this is really, really good. Very unique. It's got a nice tang. It's not too sweet. Um, but it's got such a nice tang. And this color, is there's a turmeric in there.
I'm gonna go another 15 or 20 minutes to get that sauce set in and, and to give those ribs just a little bit more cook time. I actually took this 30 more minutes and we're where I wanna be now. Look at that, beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these off the pit, let them rest, bring them out and I'll slice them up for you guys. And here we are, rested up, ready to try out. So let's see how we did here. Well, first of all, very, very tender. Wow. Nice juiciness, nice smoke ring. It's not really, really dark, but it's actually pretty thick, pretty wide. Very happy with that outside. It's got a nice glazy shimmer to it. It's definitely set up. Let's give us a try. Mm. <laughs> wow. I'm going to give myself a Hollywood cut so I can. This is the perfect amount of tenderness. Mm. I mean, it's pulling from the bone, but it's not falling off the bone. I'm hungry. <laughs> I haven't had my lunch lit yet. This is good. Wow. So, my thoughts about the cook. Well, first of all, the sauce is freaking excellent. Um, it's definitely not like a sweet, sweet sauce. I mean, there's some sweet in there, but it's, um, gosh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, there's a nice smoke ring. Look at that. So good. Where was I? Um, so cooking it on the ribs definitely changed the profile of that of that sauce. Um, I mean, there's that nice tang. There's a nice warmth to it. I mean, there's you know some pepper in there. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, but it leans more towards savory. The sauce does. I think it would go very well on several different types of proteins, not just pork. I think it'd go really good on beef. It's a unique, a very unique flavor. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing from Kevin when he makes this sauce to let me know how close I came to Sonny's barbecue sauce. Regardless, this is going on my list of, it's, it's a keeper for sure. Now to the cooker, um, I mean it cooks, you know, as well hanging the food, or at least hanging the ribs, as the uh, pit barrel cooker does. There was a little bit of a learning curve. You know, the thing that's nice about the pit barrel cooker is you just know. You don't have to manipulate any dampers other than the one set it and forget it at the bottom, which is really cool. They're giving you the um, ability to adjust the top damper on the Badger barrel, which I think is cool, but you know there's a little bit of guesswork involved. And uh, I'll be honest with you, just to kind of see where I was, I um, took you know my instant read thermometer and stuck it in through the top, one of the top vent holes, just to see where I was and to help me find out where I needed to be as far as that, that damper setting was. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it seems common sense to me. But, uh, so I ended up, like I said, right at that halfway point, which is really where I was guessing on my first video, just kind of looking at the amount of opening you have compared to a pit barrel. So 
for me, where I'm cooking and using lump charcoal, at least, um, that halfway point was the perfect uh, setting for this cook. Like I said, it was right around the 200, well, I didn't say, but I'm telling you now, right around that 260 degree mark um, for the temperature. And uh, three and a half hours was the total cook time, and I think it turned out excellent. Very happy with this. Anyway, um, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. I'll have a link for the uh, Badger Barrel down below. Again, I will have the recipe written out in the description box as well as you saw it on the screen earlier. This is a really good sauce and it's definitely worth, uh, worth your try. I mean, um, like I said, not a lot of sugar in it other than a lot of the natural sugars like from the tamarind and the ketchup, but um, it's good, like really good. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please do make sure you ring that notification bell, thumb up the video if you like it, and I hope you did. I'll see you on the next video. Uh, cheers. <laughs>